today's Sunday service. I believe you're all blessed and ready to encounter God's glory. Before we go into a time of praise and worship, we're going to go into a moment of prayer. So prepare your hearts and just get ready to just speak to God, to just worship him, to lift up your praises unto him. I want us to take this time to just acknowledge God for who he is, not just for whatever may have happened, but just to fix your focus on God. In Psalms 46 verse 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. So whatever may have happened, no, but no matter how you may feel right now, just set it all aside, all your stresses, whatever may be troubling you, just fix your focus on God and God alone, for he is in control, for he is the sovereign God, for he is the most high God, El Elyon, he is Yahweh, he is the one who, is, who was and is to come. So just lift your voices, open up your mouth and just fill your room with worship. Just open up your mouth and just fill your room with praises just lift up your praises unto the most high God for he is deserving for he is worthy for he deserves it him and him alone he doesn't share his glory with anyone else he alone is on the throne so just lift up your praises for he inhabits the praises of his people so Lord we thank you and we praise you we glorify your holy name for you are holy and you are mighty you are great and greatly to be praised there is no one like you you are the most high God. There is none other. There is none greater than you. You are the most high God, oh Jesus. And so we worship you. We adore your holy name. For you are great and great needs to be praised, oh God. None can compare to you. No one can do the things you do. You are the ancient of days, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who was, who is to come. You never change. You never fail. You, you remain the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. For you are a faithful God. You never fail your children. You never let your children be forsaken. You said you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we worship you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We appreciate you right now. We set our eyes on you. We fix our focus on you and you alone, oh God. For you deserve it, for you are worthy, oh Jesus, to so receive our praises, oh God. Receive all the honor, all the adoration, all the praise, oh Lord, for you deserve it, for you are worthy, oh King of glory, for you are great and great need to be praised, oh God. You are a good father, oh Father. You want the best for your children. You never do anything to hurt or harm us, oh Lord, for you declare that you have great plans for us, plans of good and not of evil, to give us a future and a hope, oh Lord, so we rest assured in your goodness. Precious truth in your mercy, in your faithfulness, O oh Lord. For we are your children, O oh King of glory, and we have a great inheritance in you, O oh Lord. We thank you for you cause all things to work together for our good, O oh King of glory. Nothing bad happens to us under your protection, for we hide under the, your secret shadow, O oh King of glory. So, Lord, we trust that you keep us safe, O oh Lord, for you are God who does what he says. You are faithful. What you say is what you will do. You never back on your word. Your word never returns to you void, O King of glory, for you are faithful and perfect in all of your ways. There is nothing you cannot do, O King of glory. You never slumber, nor do you sleep, O Father Lord. You have no limits, for you say you can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever think or ask, O Lord. So we lift our praises unto you, O Jesus. We sing our praises unto you right now, O Lord. We fill our rooms with worship, O Lord. For you are deserving, Lord. For you are worthy, O King of glory. We thank you, Lord, and we worship and praise your holy name. For you are Yahweh. You are the Most High God. You are the Great King. You are God Almighty. You are great. And you are no Father, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, O Lord. Sing our praises to you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to start off with this song that says, you can build your home right here. So as we've invited the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in your pre pre presence and in your place this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll sing like there's nobody listening but you. Hey. I'll dance like there's nobody watching but you And I'll worship with my last breath Give my all to there's nothing left My focus is you Jesus, you are my center My hope, my treasures
Come on, just give him glory right there. Just say, Father, I'll stay right here because this is where your presence is. I'll stay here until, oh, Father, that your spirit may fill me, almighty God. I'll stay here until your presence comes. Father, right now, I surrender myself. I surrender and sacrifice myself as a living sacrifice oh father this is your temple come and dwell in this temple this morning come on just invite the lord to say come and dwell here come and stay here come and reside here let your home be here right here where i am hallelujah because jesus you are worthy of it all jesus you are worthy and i will give you praise and worship because you are worthy i will declare on all nations oh God father that you are worthy I will raise my voice oh God from the mountain tops to declare that you are worthy I will not be silent oh God father but I will say that only you Jesus Christ are worthy hallelujah father we thank you hallelujah hallelujah father we worship you and adore you Take all the glory in this place, yes. Take all the glory in this place. And all the saints and angels bow before your throne. And all
why we're standing right now because of you Jesus and so father that's why we lift up our hearts to you to say that you are worthy of everything that we can give you in this moment there's nothing more that we can give you that you haven't already given us so in this moment the only thing that you require of us is a sacrifice of worship is a sacrifice of praise father so that's what we give you right now that's what we give you right now because only you are worthy only you are deserving almighty God there is no one else because you don't share your glory with anyone so we cannot give the glory to anyone else for, our mo for this moment right now we cannot give any glory to any human being we cannot give glory to anyone who has sustained us because only you have sustained us only you have been here with us only you have walked with us only you have been with us almighty God so father we say take all the glory because you are worthy because only you are worthy You are worthy. Only you are worthy, Father. Yes, Jesus. Cause worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve all praise. Jesus we're basically stating that that name carries and holds and shows qualities and characteristics that are worthy of the highest praise 
Revelation 5 tells us that only Jesus is worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. That only he is worthy because he, he, he was slaughtered and he died on the cross and his blood shed for our ransom. For every tribe, every people, every language and every nation. So if the highest measure of worthiness is the sacrifice for the sins of this world, then only Jesus is truly worthy. So when we declare that worthy is the lamb that was slain, we're acknowledging the finished work of the cross, that only he is worthy, that his blood has made a way, and that we owe our lives to him. We owe our commitment to him. So where we that have chosen to follow him, we that have decided to follow him, we ought to give our commitment to him. So that means that we can't be, we can't live, we can't talk, we can't breathe in the same way, we can't move in the same way because we owe our commitment to him, because we owe our alignment to him, because he is worthy. So right now as we sing worthy is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I, I hope and I pray that you are renewed and restored back to his alignment. I declare and, and say right now. Jesus Christ, that you will find yourself back into his presence, that you will find yourself back to him, you will find yourself back to him, because only he is worthy, because only he is worthy, there is none else that is worthy, hallelujah, hallelujah, so come on right now as we say worthy is the name of the Lord, as we say worthy is the name of the Lord, may your heart, may you humble yourself, may you humble yourself in this moment, and may May your heart be circumcised in this moment of surrender and worship. May your heart be healed. May your heart be healed from any, anything that has kept you away. Anything that has kept you in bondage. Come on right now, just give him glory. Give him glory, give him glory. Because he is worthy of all praise. Give him glory right now because he is worthy of all praise. I'm here to remind you that the stone that the builders rejected become the cornerstone where you and I are not rejected but we have direct access to our Lord Jesus Christ the one who is sustainer of all who will so come and say worthy 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 come and lift up your hands lift up your hands in his presence right now lift up your hands in his presence right now come and lift up and say worthy 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 In Matthew chapter 6, it says, Who by worrying can add to their life? Pandemic. Do not worry about tomorrow. Pagans run after these things. National emergency. Philippians 4 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My sheets are melting so fast. They just a An interesting fact about humanity is that whatever you feed grows. A financial pandemic. If you feed your faith, it grows. If you feed your fears, they so grow. It's all spiral very quickly. It's going to get worse. Some have to live and some have to die. Realize that our time is better spent talking to the Father than getting all worked up and reading and feeding our minds with the news and the media about what everybody is saying about how this is doom and gloom and how money, which we have hoped in, is lost. Hope not in money. 
hope in your Father, your God, Jesus Christ, your Savior. Have your faith and use it. Walk according to it. Whatever you feed grows. This is the time to press into the church, lean into the church, to be surrounded by God's people. We can offer prayers for one another. We can offer hope to one another. We can speak words of truth to one another. If you feast on the word of God and you renew your minds around the truth, your faith, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you go to the news and you read article after article after quote after talking head and you continue to feed those fears, they grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Whatever you feed grows. Today, did you wake up this morning and feast on the word of God and go to him in prayer? Or did you feed your fears? Hallelujah. Good morning, Revival House. I once again welcome you this wonderful morning uh, to this Sunday service as we continue to explore uh, our topic that we've been looking at for the last few weeks. I take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you. I know maybe some of you, this is the first day that you are watching us or you're tuning uh, 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 on this live broadcast. I also believe that maybe some of you uh, have been with us since the beginning of this series. So I would like you to welcome you, and I kindly request you right now. I know you had time to worship and help me appreciate the choir for such a wonderful, wonderful ministration. And I believe as we continue to uh, worship and fellowship together, we are going to build one another and strengthen one another. The Bible says that iron sharpened the iron, and I believe it is this uh, uh, service, uh, a service like this one where we come and worship God together, and then we share the scriptures together, that we come to, uh, we become more enlightened, uh, especially when it comes to the things uh, uh, of the uh, of the kingdom of God. So welcome, and I would like you right now to settle down and take your Bible, uh, your, your your notebook. Uh, for those of you who are not using notebook, I believe now this is another generation. If you are using your iPad, your phone, uh, uh, I kindly request you, uh, uh, you know, be ready now as we go uh, scripture by scripture to continue with this series. And as it is our custom, every beginning of our service, we try as much as we can to also share the, the, the prophetic word of the week, which is a word that, uh, that God is speaking to us concerning the week ahead. And I believe this is what you're going to do. And uh, after that, we are going to go to the, uh, to the study of the word. So straight away to the, uh, the pro prophetic word of the week which uh, comes from the book of Luke, chapter 12. If you go with me, the book of Luke, chapter 12, that's where we get the prophetic word of the week. And uh, verse 16, Luke 12, verse 16, it says, Then he told, me, he told them a parable, saying, the land, of the, rich ma uh, the land of a rich man was fertile and yielded plentifully. And he considered and debated within himself, What shall I do? I have no place in which to gather together my harvest. And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my storehouses and build, a, build larger ones. And there, there I will store all my grain or produce and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So, you have many good things laid up, enough for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself merrily. But God said to him, You fool, this very night they will demand, I will demand your soul of you. And all things that you have prepared, and the things that you have all prepared, whose will they be? So it is the one who continues to lay up and hoard possessions for himself and is not rich in his relation to God. This is how he fares. This is Amplified Version. This is, a, a, a prophet, this is the prophetic word that God is giving us for this week. And um, as we can see, it is very, very self explanatory uh, from verse uh, 16 up to verse 21, uh, is, is a, an admonition to all of us. And God gives us a, an example of somebody who was, his focus was only to make a livelihood, uh, amass uh, uh, properties, amass wealth, uh, with a view that one day after he have amassed everything, he will settle down and enjoy. But uh, when, uh, while he was doing this, there was no place whereby he considered uh, 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 to serve God 
or even to deepen the roots when it comes to the, the, the spiritual things or his relationship with God. And we see the end result, according to this parable, that at the, twi- I know, at the prime of, of, of his business, at the prime of his life, at the prime when he would have now seated down uh, and enjoy, uh, that is when God called him home. Not when I say calling him home, that's when God, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bible is telling us here that he, he found, he, he met his death at the prime um, you know, of his business when he would have settled down and enjoy. And I believe that the reason why God is giving us this prophetic word of the week uh, is, is in line with what, what we are learning uh, since, uh, for the last maybe five weeks. We're looking at the end times and we see there are so many people who have, uh, uh, you know, who, who we know, who have gone to be with the Lord, who have died uh, at the prime of their business. When they, they, they look at everything is going well, that's when they died. And if you ask anybody, uh, and I believe you, maybe you know this, that 90% of people who die, most of them believe that it, they will have a better tomorrow. So uh, most of them believe that they will be still alive next, uh, maybe the next one year or next two years, or even many more years. But not knowing that the Lord is requiring, uh, uh, you know, their their, their life or, or their soul, uh, you know, even when they don't think it is they, they are ready to go. So what is this? This is a preparation. This is a, a wake up call for all of us that we live a life that is uh, knowing that uh, our focus is not only in raising up money and hoarding up money, forgetting our relationship with God. And I believe this is a very, very timely prophetic word for all of us to be careful and to be ready, uh, even uh, as we study the scriptures, uh, and even as we prepare. And I'm not saying that you don't save, that you don't even uh, think about your business or your career, but always remember, there is one greater than everything that you try to do. And that is uh, the relationship that uh, you need to, to, uh, to nurture and to foster your relationship with God. So if you are listening to me this day, you may be born again, but you have done, you become Rukon. This is a time that you dig deeper and restore that relationship with God. Maybe for those of you who are listening to me this, this morning, maybe you have not given your life to Jesus. And maybe your focus more is to just work, work, or do business, and uh, not forgetting that your life can be required any time, just like as we did this parable. And I believe this is a wake-up call, and I would like you to remind yourself, read this entire chapter, and it will give you a, 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 a bigger understanding, uh, a deeper understanding of uh, the importance of being prepared uh, for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because it can be any time. Amen. Right. That is a prophetic word of the week. I know it has taken quite, uh, 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 quite a lot of your time. But let's have, uh, I believe, that uh, it's a wake-up call for all of us. And I, 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 you know, I admonish you and I pray that you continue to be prepared and also read the scriptures more. Keep that relationship with God because it can be anytime soon. In Jesus' name. Amen. Right. We are coming almost now to the end of the series that we started sometimes uh, 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 a month ago. And we've looked at uh, the title of the messages of, the, of this, this series. They are all about end times. We are almost coming now to the end of this series. And today we are going to look at the, uh, what is the battle of the Armageddon. And uh, that will be the title of the message for those of you who are taking note. And we are going to look at the scriptures, what the Bible says about this time. Uh, what is Armageddon? We are going to look at that. And when will it take place? And this will help us to understand uh, uh, history and to be able to, to understand according to what the Bible, not, not only history, but also the future. Because the thing that we are reading, uh, we have been, uh, when we are doing this research, we are looking back at some of the prophecies that were done, were prophesied uh, many years ago, but we have seen them fulfilled. Uh, uh, most of them have been fulfilled. And we have this assurance that even those that which have not been fulfilled, they are going to be fulfilled. So we have looked at this series in depth, and today we are going to look at that, uh, the Battle of the Armageddon. For the last three weeks, uh, no, the last two weeks, we are looking at what is going to happen during the time of tribulation. And we'll say that the tribulation begins when the church is raptured, and it is a period of seven years when the judgment of God will be re- released. Uh, 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 upon humanity, and we saw, uh, we've looked at the last three, sun, uh, the last two Sundays, 
that there are three waves of judgment. There's a sealed judgment uh, that were open uh, where we saw the four, the four horses of uh, Apocalypse. And then there was the trumpet. And then there was the ball. So seven, in total there were 21 uh, uh, sequence of judgment, but they have been served in three different waves. The waves of uh, 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 where the seals were open, uh, and the trumpet were blow. Uh, there was a blowing of the trumpet, seven trumpets, and then the seven bowls that we looked at last Sunday. In today, we are going to look at uh, the battle of the Armageddon and when it's going to happen. And before we do that, we need to ask ourselves: Where are we uh, uh, in life? Where are we right now? I stumbled upon a document uh, which I'm going to ask the media to upload the diagram, and it's called the Doomsday Clock. Uh, amazingly, this the Doomsday Clock is not being uh, the one who I'll, I'll, I'm going to explain what it means. But the one who the people who came up with this idea, they it's not that they are born again, but it's so amazing that uh, that they, uh, the reason why they they came up with the idea and how they began. Uh, uh, you know, to uh, to follow upon this clock, and actually the judgment or the wisdom behind uh, the doomsday clock, it is amazing because somehow it tarries to what, with what I'm teaching you uh, this this morning. And the doomsday clock, if I can define for you, uh, if I can explain to for you, I, I found this uh, explanation in the Wikipedia. It says the doomsday clock is a symbol that represents the likelihood of man-made global catastrophe. It is maintained since 1947 by the members of the uh, bulletin of the atomic scientists. The clock is a metaphor for threats to humanity from unchecked scientific and technical advances. The clock represents the hypothetical global catastrophe as midnight and, and the bulletin's opinion on how close the world is to a global catastrophe as a number of minutes or seconds to midnight assessed in uh, and it is always assessed in january of for each year and uh, they say the doomsday clock pictured at its current setting of one 100 second to midnight so they say actually they adjust it every year and they it was uh, the idea came from a scientist and they they they, they adjust it according to the threat that they see and, and the possibility of a third world war or something that can wipe up the world and right now, this year, uh, the, the year 2021, actually they had adjusted the, on 27th of January, they had adjusted the clock, and they announced actually that um, we are, according to, their, to them, that is, to this clock, is that we are, this is the nearest we are to the end of times or to a, a, another world war or a, a, a catastrophe that will, can wipe the entire world. This is not biblical, they are not from the Bible, but they are scientists, but actually also they can also be able to design the times. Though maybe they are looking from a scientific point of view, uh, they, also, they also involve the military, and the people, uh, people uh, you, know, uh, who, you know, who understand the strength of other nations, especially those who have nuclear weapons, uh, the possibility of, uh, if they end up fighting, that there's no way that the, the, the world will survive. So this is their theory, and, um, but we, we can see as much as it is a secular theory, we know that biblically we are very near to the end. So we are going to look at that, so the battle of the Armageddon. But I want you to see something here. When we read, read the scripture last week in the book of uh, uh, Revelation chapter 16, and uh, we looked uh, at the balls uh, that were... Uh, you know, the judgment, some of the judgment that were released. And in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 15 and 16, we see part of the judgment that we, we studied last week. But something stands out, and I'll ask the media uh, to give us the second document, is that the, the judgment that we see in these scriptures, the one that we read last week, we see there's, a, there's similarity between those judgments, especially those from the balls that were released, the last wave of judgment. There's a lot of similarity between them and the judgment that was passed against the Egyptians, what we call the ten plagues of, 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 of Egypt. And we see it is uh, it's like word for word. 
most of the things that happened during that judgment, it is a, the same ju thing that happened in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 15 and 16, when the trumpet and the ball uh, and the, the balls uh, of, of judgment was released upon uh, uh, the people who would be left in the world. So, but we see that the moment uh, uh, this judgment was, um, uh, the plague was released upon Egypt, it is at that point that also the Egyptians were also delivered. But we see in our case, the body of Christ, those who have lived uh, a life pleasing to God, the church, those who are, have, uh, have lived the life and have persevered, Bible is telling us that we will be raptured before the seven, this, this seven years of tribulation. But we know because God is merciful. At this point, uh, even after rapture, there are people who will be left. And most people will give their life to Jesus at this point. And within these seven years, uh, because God is so merciful and kind, and he desires that no man should perish, but many should come to him and give their life to him. Because of his mercy and grace, he will still save people during these seven years of tribulation. And we see that uh, at this point, they will be delivered after this. So we see just example uh, as, as it was with the, the children of Israel when they were uh, in captivity in, in Egypt, when these plagues were uh, you know, performed in the life of the, in the nation of Egypt, then there was that deliverance. So we see, actually we can say there's nothing new in the Bible because we, what we see actually has happened in the past. So in a way, God is showing us, as I did it to the children of uh, to the Egyptians, by sending plagues, I will also do it in the end times. And that's why we see the similarity between the book of, uh, as you can see in the diagram, Exodus chapter 7 to chapter 11, uh, uh, we see the plagues. And also Revelation chapter 15 to 16, we see uh, uh, the, the similarity of the, of the wrath of God. The way he afflicted the Egyptians, it is the same way he will pour this judgment. So we see there's nothing new. Uh, God is faithful and merciful. Whatever he do, he always prepare us uh, in advance. Just like the way we know as the rapture will come, we know there are types and shadows in the Bible, in the Old Testament, whereby we are able to understand how rapture will come. And this is one thing that, I, that always gives me an encouragement to know that uh, as a support that the church will not go through tribulation is because just like it was in the time of Noah, um, when the, the flood came, which was a sign of judgment, Noah, uh, when you read the scripture, and we are going to read it in the book of Genesis chapter 7, uh, verse 4 to 5, we see after Noah uh, built the ark, actually the Bible said that, and God welcomed him. Uh, it is God who invited him to the ark. Let's read the book of Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. We are looking at uh, these things, even as, before even we look at the Armageddon, we are looking at there is nothing new. Uh, God always prepared us, and he has given us signs and examples in the Old Testament that are able that help us to understand uh, the, the mind of God, the will of God, the plan of God, and how things are going to unfold. So, and that's why Bible says God is merciful and kind, and all these things Bible says are written for admonition. The book of Genesis chapter seven verse one, and also verse four and five, it says, "Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are the, you are righteous." before me in this generation. Then uh, verse 4, it says, For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. So you see, this is another type of judgment. Another type of judgment. But we see uh, the, uh, uh, Noah and his family, they are, they are taken up. And judgment comes. But before they were inside the, the, the ship, uh, or the, the, the ark, uh, uh, before they were inside the ark, the judgment ha could not, uh, had not come. But the moment they went, entered into the ark, judgment, which, was, which came in form of a flood, it, it, it was released upon the, the entire humanity. So we see, actually the Bible is saying that the, the, the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark. Imagine, he's the one, he's Noah who built the ark, but when it comes to entering into the ark, God invited him in. What does that mean? It is a type that will be invited in heaven before judgment comes. So we know that rapture will take place before the tribulation. 
And also we see the same thing with Sodom and Gomorrah, another type of rapture. Then the men said, uh, Genesis chapter 19, verse 12 and 13, it says, Then the men said to, to Rod, Have you anyone else here? Son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whomever you have in the city. Take them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So you see, another... Uh, in this, in this case, it was not the entire uh, world that, uh, earth that was destroyed, but this city was destroyed. But you see, the righteous in the city, they were taken up, they were taken out before the destruction. And this is the assurance that we have, that before this great day, which is called the great day of the Lord, or these seven years of tribulation, we know that the church will be raptured. So we see, let's look at the scriptures. The battle of Armageddon was actually prophesied before, uh, even as we see uh, uh, John speaking about it in the book of Revelation, the book of uh, Ezekiel uh, sh prophesied the nations and, and, and what will happen. We're not going to read the entire chapter, but I want you to take time to read the book of Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel 39, because this is a prophecy of what will happen at the end time. So, uh, and also Zechariah also prophesied about this, the battle of Armageddon. Though it is not mentioned Armageddon, but actually it mentioned how the battle will be, uh, how, this thing, how things will, will happen. And listen to what the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel 38, uh, uh, verse 1 to 3, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O God, the prince of Rosh, and Meshech, and Tubal. Then uh, uh, Pasha, Ethiopia, that is verse, verse 5, Pasha, Ethiopia, and Libya are with them, all of them with, with shield and helmet, Goma and all its troops, the house of Togama, from the far north and all its troops. Many people are with you. So they, this scripture is telling us they are planning to go and attack uh, Israel, but God gives us the end. Uh, the Bible is telling us what is going to happen. That even though they gather, they may gather as many nations and strong nations to go and destroy the nation of Israel and the believers who will be left that time. But Bible is telling us that God is going to avenge the, the nation of Israel, and this is why we get now the the uh, what is going to happen during this the battle of the Armageddon. But we see very well it is prophesied. Uh, uh, what is going to happen. And then we may ask yourself, what are these nations? W what is the meaning of this nation? We see uh, the names like uh, uh, Magog mentioned in this scripture. Uh, and I'm going to mention some of these nations that are going to be in this battle of the, uh, of the Armageddon. And one of the nations here, Magog, uh, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38, uh, we see Magog represent Russia. And also Meshech represent Russia and other Nation, neighboring nations. We know that there are so many nations. Russia was a very big nation. There was uh, other nations that uh, broke out from the main Russia. So I believe uh, th th it will be a confederacy of this nation coming back together. And they will be within that time uh, looking to go and destroy the nation of Israel. And I believe they will come up with this reason. They will say this nation has brought us a lot of grief. Maybe they will give a reason why. Maybe the problem that we are facing in the world is because of this nation. But in actual fact, they, they, they wanted to go and dominate. And the, the, uh, the, the Antichrist will use them mightily during that time. They will partner together to go and destroy the nation of Israel. So the other nation mentioned in this scripture of Ezekiel chapter 38 is Tuba. Uh, Tuba uh, is, 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 an, is the modern day Turkey. Also we see Pasha. The, the name Pasha here actually is Iran. We know for many years... Until 1935, Iran was called Russia, uh, was called Pasha, but they changed their name to Iran in 1935. And also in 1979, they changed actually again, and they called it uh, Islamic Nation of Iran. So we know, we, we know that actually during this battle of the Armageddon, Russia will be there, uh, 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 Turkey will be there, uh, uh, Iran will be there. And also Bible also says about Kush or uh, Ethiopia, uh, but when you read uh, scripturally and geographically, actually, you understand, actually, Bible, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 5, it talks about a, south, a nation in the south of Egypt. 
But when you look at geographically the, which nation suit this uh, uh, description, actually it is Sudan. So we know that actually, uh, and we, need, we see what we can see very, very well here is that most of the nations that are going to attack uh, will be involved in the battle of the Armageddon. Mostly they are from Islam nation. And we see also, we know that Sudan also is very uh, powerful in Islam. Not South Sudan, but actually the Sudan itself. And the, another nation that will be involved during this battle of the Armageddon, according to the prophecy of, of, of Ezekiel, is Libya. In the Bible, it is called Put. And the uh, uh, Bible says, historically, the land west of Egypt. And the other na nation is, uh, is Goma and Togama, which, are nation, uh, which is Turkey, and uh, 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 a nation neighboring to, to Turkey. So we see these are few, these are the nations, uh, some of the nations, and I believe. These are the main nations, but other nations uh, will also gather during this time to, uh, in this battle of uh, Armageddon. But when we read the, the scriptures, actually, in the book of Revelation chapter 16, uh, we understand, actually, it is the, it is the Antichrist uh, and, the, and, the, and the demonic forces that will influence these people to wage war against Israel. So, uh, obvious, they may think that it is, they, it is not, it will not be their idea. Because when you read the book of Revelation chapter 16, verse 14 and 18, we hear it is a demonic influence that will cause them to go and fight against the Israelites. Let's read together. The book of Revelation chapter 16, verse 14, it says, For they are the spirit of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth, and of the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I'm coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keep his garments, lest he walk he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gather them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noise and thundering and lightning, and there was a great earthquake, such as a mighty and great earthquake as had occurred since men were on earth. So we see, number one, Bible is reminding us here that we should be careful. We should be people who are ready. But, but you see, and Bible is saying here, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keep his garment, rest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And they gathered together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. So it's like Bible is telling us here, please, guys, be careful because this day will be an intolerable day. I will not like you to be found there. But he said, blessed, actually, is a blessing to be ready, to be expectant of the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is important for us to be to live a, 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 a life that is that is pleasing to God. It is, it is, the Bible is, uh, is imploring us here. Live Elisha's life. Live a life that uh, any, if Jesus Christ comes, uh, the rapture uh, take place today, that you know that you'll be left, you'll not be left behind. And actually, the scripture is telling us here why it is important because he's saying uh, during this time, um, and they, uh, because if you don't do this, you'll find yourself in, during this battle of the Armageddon. You'll find yourself in time of tribulation. Remember what we read last week? That when the fifth ball was poured, that people were praying for death. People were seeking death. And death, they could not die. Imagine you want to kill yourself because of the trouble. But you cannot die. Imagine how many people who try to kill themselves during that time because of what is happening. But they cannot die. Because even death will not, you know, you will not die. And, and because people had to go through that. Uh, according to the scripture. So, this is, I'm not scaring anybody, uh, but it is important to know what is going to happen. So, even by the time we live our, our life on this, uh, in, uh, on this earth, we are living a very intentional, uh, 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 in a, a very intentional life that we know that when Christ comes, we'll be, uh, we'll go with him. So, the battle of the Armageddon, uh, uh, actually, the, by, the word Armageddon is always only mentioned once in the Bible. And it is in the book of Re Revelation chapter 16, verse 16, where we see Armageddon. But actually, Armageddon um, is derived from that word Megiddo, which is the area where the battle of the Armageddon is going to take place. 
So, and as you can see in the diagram number three, uh, I'll ask the media to upload it. This is uh, uh, from the aerial view. That's why the, the battle will be. And you can see uh, uh, this place of the Megiddo, uh, uh, this place called Megiddo, uh, that's why we now we get the word, the battle of the Armageddon. But the, actually, the battle of the Armageddon, is not, it will not be against, it, it will be, uh, they will have come to, together. All these nations will gather together. They will come in millions. They will come with great, uh, great armory, uh, with all manner of, of, of uh, ammunition. But before even they attack Israel, Jesus Christ himself is going to come and attack. What an amazing thing. We know very well in so many occasions that the nation of Israel have gone to war against other nations, but God has always given them victory. And this is the confidence that we should have, not only the nation of Israel, that Bible says that those who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. Listen, as long when you are a child of God, no matter how many battles you may face, you will never lose. We should have that confidence. Just like uh, uh, David, the Bible says that he's one of the kings who fought many battles, but he's one of, the, uh, of all the kings of Egypt, uh, of Israel. He was the only king who have never lost a battle. I can, I've come to announce and prophesy to you. As long as you are a child of God, listen, you may face many battles like, Danny, uh, that, like, like David, but listen, you will always come out stronger. Bible reminds ourselves, even in uh, Daniel and the, uh, uh, Meshach, uh, Shadrach, and Abednego, the Hebrew boys in the book of Daniel, no matter the challenge that they faced, listen, every challenge that came their way was an opportunity for them to be promoted to another level. Why am I saying this? Even as we prepare to the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Yes, we have all these things said, but we have, you should have this confidence that no matter the challenge that comes your way, it will never leave you the same way you are. It is an opportunity for your promotion. Listen, listen I want you to do an audit of the time that you have gone through so much uh, hardship. When you, uh, when you look back as a believer, every time you look back, you'll say, though I went through this, actually I learned more, or actually my life has never been the same. Listen, believe you, brothers and sisters, we may go through so many challenges, and, but through the challenges, as children of God, God will always come through for us. Sometimes they may look like he's delaying, but listen, he cannot let you be tempted more than what you can be able to bear. And I've got good news for you, that our God is a faithful father, and he will not let you be tempted more than what you can be able to bear, and no matter the battles that may come against you, listen, he will always give you the victory. As you can see, diagram number four, I'll ask the media to upload it. We see this is a valley. It's called the Valley of Megiddo. Actually, some call it the breadbasket of Israel. Uh, as you can see from an aerial view, it's a very flat area. And it's a, this is where the battle will take place. And uh, as you can see, this place is not the first time that battle has taken place in this valley. But in, in Israel, actually, uh, uh, Jehoshaphat uh, had, had fought in this area. Uh, uh, we can also we know Josiah. There was a they had a king by the name of Josiah. He was a young man, uh, one of their most beloved king, and he was killed in in, in this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, in this what do you call it in this uh, valley uh, of Megiddo. And we know that it's, historically this is a place where so many other battles have taken place. But there will be a battle now, uh, which we are calling the, the Armageddon or the, uh, the you know. Uh, uh, the battle of the Lord or the day of the Lord. Uh, this is where the, most of the uh, armies, will, uh, all these nations that I've mentioned to you uh, in, from the book of Ezekiel chapter 38, most of them, were, uh, they will be destroyed and none of them will be able to escape. And we know that God always fight for, uh, for Israel, but this is a final battle. Even as he waged war uh, uh, to, for, the, for the remnant who will be left that time, he'll give them victory. We know uh, historically in the year 1967, there was a battle uh, that, where the, the, the nations of uh, the surrounding Israel, um, they came out together as a unified uh, 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 forces to fight against is, uh, Israel. And they, we know very well, for those of you who have read, uh, ever read this story or hist this history, you understand that actually the Israelites were outnumbered. Uh, the nations of uh, the United Arab Republic uh, 
Jordan, Syria, uh, the Palestinian guerrillas, um, and uh, also uh, Egypt, they were all coming together to fight. And the Arab armies, they were numbered at half a million men, while Israel only had 75,000. The, the, Arabs, the Arabs fielded 5,000 tanks and 900 combat, combat aircraft, whereas the Israel total was only 1,000 tanks and 175 jets. But listen, yet when the smoke cleared after all this, the six days battle, listen what happened after six days, the United uh, 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 Arab forces, they were destroyed. They had lost all the warplanes. 20 of them, 20,000 of, uh, uh, of lives were lost. And all this nation coming against Israel, they were defeated. But even those who participated in the battle, they said it is not in the, the mighty of the Israel, Israel army, but actually there were supernatural forces that were helping Israel to fight. And in so many occasions, we've seen Israel defended by God. And also in this battle of the Armageddon, this is where now the, the God himself destroyed all the enemies that have risen against him for many years. And this is the, the final battle where we see now, um, after this final battle, we will see now Christ come because he's the one who is going to fight this battle, destroy the armies, destroy all these uh, 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 forces that come to rise against Israel. And when he destroy them, then he's going to come now. This is where you're going to see now the, the beginning of the Mirino reign. And I believe this is our last, uh, 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 next Sunday will be, I think will be our last, whereby we are going to look at the Mirino reign after Christ has destroyed this army in the battle of Megiddo. And as you can see in that diagram, uh, uh, we see we are, the, we are, we are the, the one, the believers who have been raptured. They are the ones who are going to come back with Christ. And they are going to uh, reign on earth for a thousand years. And what a glorious thing to be counted among the numbers. And listen, you may call me uh, a scaremonger. You may call me uh, that maybe this message is, uh, is outdated. But brothers and sisters, I am passionate uh, that none of you will miss heaven. You may have your own opinion, but I, 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 listen, I'm not saying that what I'm saying, that this is the only thing that you, sh you should study. Take time, study your Bible. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and uh, give you revelation because we are coming. We are very near to the end. And during this battle of the Armageddon, we will see, the Bible says actually it will be bloodshed like never before. They say that actually life will be lost because I believe this time God will be destroying all the forces of darkness that has stood against him for many years and will see the victory before the coming of, uh, of the millennial reign uh, that will be led by none other but uh, uh, General, uh, the King of Kings, uh, Jesus Christ himself. And who, will, who, will, who is going to be with him? It is the church, the believers who will have been uh, raptured and even those who will die um, during the, uh, the tribulation, most of them will die. Most of them will be martyred. But still, they will be, they will be able to come down with Christ and reign for a thousand, time, a thousand years. Brothers and sisters, I have preached so many messages, but, uh, and many messages which are dear to my heart. But I can say that of all the messages that I have preached, this one is so dear to me because I know. It gives me the history. It knows that I, I, I'm just uh, uh, holding on to uh, something that is, does not have a hope. I, I, I'm not living like somebody who doesn't have hope. But I have the Bible which has shown me the historically how things have been and how things are going to unfold. And listen, we are not in darkness anymore. We have the word. And I have guarantee of eternal life. Brothers and sisters, my prayer for you and for your family is that none of you will miss heaven. Because the more I read about the tribulation time, the more I read what is going to happen, the more I read about uh, 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 the end times, the more I'm passionate uh, to study, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, preach, to preach this word, because I know the time is near, more than uh, w when we first began. Brothers and sisters, as we come to the conclusion of our service this morning, I pray that none of you will be left behind. And also not only that, I pray that you begin to live a life that glorifies God. The time for sitting on the fence is over. The time for Rukom Christian, uh, 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 being a Rukom Christian is over. Uh, and the time to pray games is over. The time for brain game is over. 
This is a time that we, uh, we, we, uh, we, you know, we fight for the faith that was given to us by the, uh, by, by the, by the apostles. We, we, we go back to the old paths whereby we understand the, the, the heart of God, the mind of God. And we know that the heart of God is nations. We know that the heart of God is to win souls. And this is the time that we go back to what God called us to do as, bra- uh, as believers. Brothers and sisters, all manner of messages have been preached. All manner of circus and theatrics we have seen. But listen, it is a time we go back to the old uh, to the path that were created by uh, for us by the, the by the apostles. Listen, I'm not saying that things are going to become better. We see, we I'm, 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 all I can tell you, Bibles to, told us that even even the elite will be deceived in these last days. So we are, we are assured that things are not going to get better. Many theatrics and many conmen will come out of the, uh, will come. Many will merchandise you. Many will, uh, will, will, you know, will use all manner of powers just to get fame. But brothers and sisters, if you are studying the scriptures for yourself, if you have time uh, uh, with the Holy Spirit, if you are fellowshipping with God, listen, you don't st- you, there is no chance of you being deceived. But listen, if you are not studying the word for yourself, if you are not digging deeper for yourself, if you don't have that devotion time for yourself, then... You, are, you, you, can have sub, you would have served God, but listen, it, it, takes so easy, it can be so easy for you to be tricked and deceived because you don't have the root. This is my prayer for you, that deepen your root, deepen your relationship with God, and we know that even when the, the trumpet is, uh, uh, is brought, that will not be left behind. This is my prayer for all of us, that we will leave a legacy and will be found uh, ready when Jesus Christ come back. So let's pray together. And I make a prayer for you. As we come to the conclusion of today's service. And I want to pray for you. And um, if you have not given your life to Jesus. This is a time that you say. Uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, uh, you know. I'm tired of this life. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to serve you. And I want to uh, 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 live a life that is uh, well pleasing to you. So take this opportunity. And if you if you like somebody to. Uh, you know. To talk to you more about salvation, uh, there's a number that you can see on the screen. Uh, uh, write it down. Uh, you can WhatsApp on that number. You can call on that number. Or even the email details that are there, you can email us. And somebody is going to come back to you and is going to explain to you more. And even the, the, the materials that I've been t- teaching, uh, uh, you know, you, you can join our Bible studies every Wednesday. And we can be able to share with you uh, the, the, the scriptures and the materials that we have been using uh, uh, to deepen your faith. Uh, when it comes, especially to, in this topic about the uh, end times. So they, may the Almighty God richly bless you. And I pray for you that may God strengthen you. May God deepen your roots. May God restore you. If you have become rukum, may the Holy Spirit brood upon you afresh. And may he restore that power and passion, uh, uh, passion that you had in the beginning. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that his grace will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. This is my prayer for you that may God restore anything, everything that the enemy has taken away, that which the kankaum and the pamum has eaten, may the Lord restore to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Your time has come. Your time has come in Jesus' name. May his grace rest upon you. And I also pray for your family. Whatever you might be going through, whatever might be uh, uh, causing that division, causing that hatred, causing that enmity, we break that spirit right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We, and I pray for your marriage. I pray for your children. I pray for, uh, uh, for, for, for everything uh, that, uh, that has been, uh, anything that has been bothering you. We come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. And we speak peace in your marriage, peace in your family, peace in your child. Right now, even some of you who feel so much overworked and overwhelmed, I pray right now, may the grace of God rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I hear the Lord saying, break that spirit of taskmasters. And what, what do I pray again is that? The taskmasters is whereby you are being so overworked that even you don't have time even for your God. Uh, and maybe when, you, when I say overworked, maybe we're looking at how much you're getting back and there is nothing that can show, uh, that can equate to, uh, to the type of work that you are doing. I've had so many people tell me, Pastor, I think I've been, uh, nowadays I'm working even more than even before the pandemic. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that that spirit of the, the, uh, of the taskmasters who are holding you captive, who are, uh, who are abusing you, I break that spirit right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare right now, if you shall enjoy your work, you shall enjoy your business, you shall enjoy your career, and you shall not sow in another one leap. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare your harvest 
is not going to be taken away in the name of Jesus. And as I pray for you, I also come against those little foxes that spoil the harvest. It can be in your marriage. It can be in the life of your children. It can be in your business. It can be uh, uh, in your day-to-day running of your, career, uh, you know, of your business or your career. But today we come against those little foxes. I hear the Lord saying, come against those little foxes that spoil the harvest. This day, in the name of Jesus, even it can be dis- distraction. Even when you're doing the study of the word, we come against those little foxes right now. In the name of Jesus, and we declare, you are free. And the Spirit of God will give you high level of discernment to be able to identify the thing that has been taken away from you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we come to the conclusion of our service this morning. Uh, and I will ask the media to take us to the next uh, session. Whereby we are going to honor God with our substances. And even before we do that, I would like to appreciate you. For all that you continue to do. The ministries to stand. And even for us to be able to air every time to come to you. To do this recording. To prepare them. Uh, you know, it, it takes time. And also some. Uh, it also takes money. And even to uh, have maintained everything that we have, uh, we, uh, God has given us as a ministry, it has taken your contribution and your support financially and also through prayer. So we, uh, I thank God for your life, and I am grateful that uh, I can say that uh, you are, God has been faithful. And I can I always say that we are the best givers. In I believe the church, our church has the best givers, and you are one of them. So God is to bless you, and thank you as I ask the media to take us to that uh, session. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, maybe we need to go over this one more time. Do we have to? Well, sweetie, I don't know if you're getting a good grasp of the ratios here. Fine. Okay, all right, well, step by step. Before we spend any money, what's the first thing that we do? Give to God. Good, and why do we do that? Because he first loved and gave to us. Good, 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 good. Okay, great. Now the second jar here is for so many different things. Be- Hold on. What? God lives in heaven, right? Yeah, he lives in heaven. And heaven has streets paved with gold, right? Streets paved with gold, sure, yes. So why does he need my money if I don't even have a job? (laughs) Okay, all right, so good question. So basically when we give to God, we're, we're giving to the church. So the church gives the money to God? No, the church keeps the money. Oh, does God know about this? (laughs) <laughs> yes, he uh, basically built the system, yeah. Okay, good. Okay. See, sweetie, as you grow up, there is nothing better than giving back to God. In the Bible, it's the only place God says, test me on this. When it comes to your money, he says, test me. It's almost like he's saying, I dare you. And your mom and I, we do just that. Even when things are tough... We always give the first part of our money back to God. And then the church takes that money and does all kinds of things to make God famous, uh, like camps and mission trips and even VBS that you love so much, and even helps out people that are in need. You can't outgive God. And when God says test him and you do it, he will come through every single time. Okay, Dad, I get it. I do have one question, though. Uh, okay. Why do we need to test God if he already knows all the answers? That's, that's good. Let me just retrace my steps here just for a minute. <sighs>
Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right now we come to the conclusion of our service. And I'd like us to share the benediction together. And I, I, as I always remind you, please, let's pray for one another. Uh, though we may not be meeting uh, regularly as we used to, I know this time we are going to come back to church very soon. And we are going to have time together, uh, worship together, fellowship together, laugh together, cry together. But we don't have to wait until that time. Let's continue to pray for each other, for one another, and, uh, and call each other. Let's know how one another, uh, you know, what everyone is doing. And may the Almighty God richly bless you. Reminding you again about our Bible study on Wednesday. And um, God is going to uh, richly bless you. Let's share the grace together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God is here, bless you. Uh, 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 looking forward to see you again uh, on Sunday. And for those of you who will be able to join us on Wednesday, looking forward to see you on Wednesday. God is here, bless you. And remind, I remind you once again, uh, uh, I reminded you last Sunday, but I, once again I remind you that the food bank is open. If you know the family that is struggling, every Tuesday and every Friday we are serving food. Uh, we are giving free food uh, uh, every Tuesday and, and, and every Friday. So God bless you. Love you and continue sharing the gospel. Let the world know that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Amen and amen. Look up, look up, yeah. Look up, look up, your redemption draws near.